Hello YouTube. Today's video is a continuation of my series on purifying over-the-counter chemicals. And today we're going to be looking at recrystallization. Recrystallization is a way of purifying solid uh, chemicals uh, into a more pure form. And the idea behind this is to dissolve them into solution. So what we're going to be doing is potassium chloride. Potassium chloride that I have is from no salt, which you can get uh, at uh, grocery stores. It's a sodium-free salt alternative. Uh, so if you look at the ingredients of no salt, there's potassium chloride, which is what we're after, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Potassium bitartrate, uh, adipic acid, silicon dioxide, mineral oil, and fumaric acid. So all those other things are going to be impurities, the majority of which is going to be the potassium chloride. Uh, so, what we're going to do is take some of that and dissolve it into a hot solution. So, I've got about 71 grams worth of potassium chloride. It looks just like normal table salt, sodium chloride. Um, we're going to put that into about 200 milliliters of water. And I've heated this water to sort of speed things up a bit because things uh, dissolve better in hot solutions than cold solutions. And I've also, I'm also going to stir it uh, while it's on here with my stir plate. So that's going to speed things up a bit. So what's going to happen here is everything that's soluble, obviously, is going to dissolve. And things like the silicon dioxide impurity, for example, won't dissolve. So we'll be left with a little bit of uh, undissolved material once, once we're, we're done here. And so we'll be able to get rid of that pretty much immediately by filtration. The rest of it that goes into solution, we're going to let this cool down. And as it cools, the main component, uh, well, everything is going to want to crystallize, but the main component will, will do so first just because there's so much of it in there. And when materials crystallize, they, they want to do it in a particular fashion. And if there's impurities present, uh, they would tend to mess up this crystal structure. So once things crystallize, they, they tend to exclude impurities because they would screw up the, the crystal structure. So once the, uh, once the potassium chloride starts to crystallize from the solution, it should be much purer than it was before because all the impurities will then be concentrated in the rest of the solution. Okay, it looks like this is dissolved about as much as it's going to dissolve. So now, like I said, we're going to filter it to remove any insoluble impurities like that silicon dioxide. Because we're filtering a hot solution, uh, generally a good idea is to first pour some regular old water or some of your solvent, whatever that might be, uh, through your filter paper first uh, just to keep it hot. So this is, this is hot water, so we're, we have to um, heat the filter paper up a bit before we run our real solution through it because otherwise it might, when you pour the hot solution through the cold filter, uh, it might crystallize out in the filter paper and block a lot of the pores and just make everything a lot slower and you'd lose some of your product. So we want to um, pour some hot water through the filter first just to get it up to the right temperature. So now that that's done, I'll remove my little catch flask here and we're going to put it in an evaporating dish. And that's what the real solution is going to go into. So I'll turn off the heat and the stirring. And you may not be able to see this very well, but on the top of this, see it's boiling a little bit now, on the top of this there's a film of oil, what looks like oil. So that's got to be the, um, the mineral oil impurity that was listed on the, uh, on the container there. So that should hopefully stay in the filter as well. So, now we're just going to go ahead and, like I said, pour that into the filter and get rid of all the soluble, or the in, rather the insoluble impurities. So pretty much immediately after filtering, uh, we're seeing some crystallization on the surface of the liquid as well as on the bottom. So you can see when I move it around, there's some small crystals that are floating around there. That's really not ideal. Um, what you want in a recrystallization for best results is, is slow cooling, as slow as possible. 
if you get fast cooling like this, what can happen is the, uh, the crystals of your product come together so quickly that they trap impurities in them. So you still have some impurity there. Uh, for best results, if you cool it exceptionally slowly, like uh, for example, if, if you put this in a thermos or something so that it has a lot of time to cool down, then uh, you'll get nice big crystals that exclude impurities a lot better. So I ended up filtering off all of those little crystals that precipitated right after the solution cooled, uh, and I was left with a clear solution, which I've, I've now I've left out overnight, and this is what it looks like now. So you can see that there's some nice crystallization happening, um, and the crystals are nice and cubical, kind of like regular table salt, sodium chloride. Uh, so that's good. That's a good indication that things are going as they should. Um, so I lost, when I filtered the small crystals, I of course lost a good bit of, um, of my uh, compound that I wanted, but I figured, you know, we're going for purity here, so it's best, as I said, to leave these things to cool slowly on their own to, uh, to best exclude impurities. So I'm going to let this continue to evaporate and, um, until most of the solution is gone. Okay, I've let my solution evaporate over a couple of days and what's actually happened is something that's happened to me before and I think it's called creep. Uh, so the, the solution crystallizes on the sides of the, the dish and sort of creeps up the side of it and can go over the top of it and spill out. Um, so you can see that that happened here. So like right here, there's a little crop of crystals on the outside of the filter paper. You can see. Um, and and so, so what had happened was they, they kind of come up the side of the, the crystallizing dish and come up onto the filter paper. So if I take this off, you'll be able to see the filter paper itself is pretty heavy because it had a bunch of crystals stuck to it. So the solution will start to crystallize on the sides of the dish directly above the surface and that will wick moisture up the crystals which will go to the top of that crystal, evaporate, deposit more crystals and uh, the, these crystals will slowly propagate up the sides of the dish. So it started at the, at the surface, came all the way up the top here, started to soak into the filter paper around the edges and now has spilled over the sides. So let's see if we can get a little closer, see that there's actually crystal formation all along the outside of this thing. You can see the ones in the bottom are nice big uh, square crystals like they should be, like what I expected they would be. These are definitely going to be a lot purer because they're, they're big single crystals and so like I said that excludes impurities. All the little ones along the outside I would imagine as the liquid travels up those crystals, it, uh, it takes some of the impurities along with it, and so those will get deposited on the sides. So if this happens to you when you're doing a recrystallization, um, I would say just collect the ones on the bottom here. Uh, so all of, all of these larger ones down at the bottom of the solution, um, I would imagine those would be more pure. Um, and so once you've done that, then you can scrape off all the small ones on the sides, redissolve those in water and do another recrystallization uh, to try and get more pure stuff. I'm not really sure how to stop this phenomenon from happening. If anybody knows any good techniques, uh, let me know. Because I've had this happen to me before and it was not a pretty experience. <laughs> the, the liquid actually uh, creeped all the way up over the top of my beaker and flowed out along the surface of my table. And I didn't even notice until it was almost dripping over the side. So now what I'm going to do is just collect all these large crystals on the bottom, like I said, and that will be my purified uh, potassium chloride. And if you wanted to, you could recrystallize those again. You can take the big crystals, smash them up, redissolve in water, do another recrystallization, and you'll get even purer product. And I've heard of procedures that call for literally thousands of recrystallizations to get extremely high purities. So you can do this as many times as you want. So here are my recrystallized potassium chloride crystals. Uh, on the left are the big square ones that were on the bottom of the dish, and on the right is sort of the powder, the, the crust that was along the sides of the dish. Um, I'm probably going to recrystallize again, redissolve and recrystallize the, the powder just so I can get these nice big square ones. Uh, but these are really beautiful. You can see they're nice 
square crystals, a lot like table salt uh, would be, just a lot bigger because I gave them much more time to crystallize. So that's how you perform a recrystallization and purify a single solid over-the-counter chemical. Thanks for watching.